Welcome back everyone to more X4 Foundations here at Neepit Gaming. In today's video, I want to sort of wrap up what we've been doing with the main story mission. Now, as I've mentioned before, the main story mission as it currently exists uh, is not very enjoyable for me. Uh, in fact, I've taken to creating some save files at various points so that I don't have to go back and do it each time I start a new save. The save that I'm actually playing right now is different than the one I've been using, uh, which is basically by design because the economy breaks down at various different parts uh, depending on how your save goes. There's a lot of randomness that plays into it, how much conflict there is and that kind of thing. So I tend to start uh, several different playthroughs uh, and have different saves going at, at different times. That allows me to test out a lot of different ways of doing things. So Basically, that's one of the fun parts of the game, particularly in its broken state uh, with regards to the economy right now. But before we get into any of that, let's start off by sewing up what we've been dealing with on the main story mission. So where we left off uh, in last time, we we went, we placed down a couple of, you know, a satellite, a resource probe. Then uh, she conducted her experiment and, you know, and poof, we have a station that's now in existence with this humongous asteroid in its center. Well, from there, there's only a couple more things that you need to do. And uh, because we're not going through this in a let's play style, we're going to skip by those mostly because um, I am not a fan of those missions simply because of how bad the AI is in those missions. I do not enjoy doing them at all. But essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to get her from where her captors currently have her over to your station and then there's an escort mission to uh, where you're supposed to escort a a decoy ship out of the sector and that's where the terrible terrible AI takes on and I can't stand to do that mission any more than I have to. Uh, the good news is you basically don't have to do it because uh, the AI will not destroy that ship regardless. They do a little damage to it but it's generally no big deal. So once you get her on the station that's pretty much it. You start the what I would call the final mission, which is to do research. Uh, and that's basically where this ends for now. And then I say for now because in future updates, I have no doubt that this is going to be expanded upon. But for right now, it is, it's not very robust at all. You're going to have her do some research for you, and then that's sort of it. Uh, there is no more main story plot. If you want to get into some other... Uh, plots, story plots, and missions, then you're going to have to join up with factions and, and take the different missions that you get uh, at the different stations and so on. And that's how you're going to progress in the story if you choose to do so. So let's go ahead and pull up and let's take a look at the research menu that she will uh, bring to you. So in the research menu, there are several things that she can research for you and give you access to. Again, you can see I haven't even finished all of these out. Each one of these will take 10 minutes of real time in order for her to work through. Of course, the most popular is going to be teleportation, but then you've got some different hacks that will allow you uh, to gather blueprints from the various different modules on stations. And then you've got some mods that we'll look at here in just a moment. But teleportation is going to be the most useful to you start out with just a basic teleportation level, uh, which allows you to go over a very limited range. So this is not very useful. But as you start to expand that range, you can see that once we get to range level one, then we're going to be able to uh, teleport to any of our ships and or owned stations within one system to three systems. Then we go out to range number two, three systems to five systems. And then finally, range number three is we can jump anywhere to any of our own ships or stations. So this is where it really can get fun for you. And you can jump around to ships that might be uh, about to get into battle or you can get out of harm's way with it. Uh, because of course, if you get uh, destroyed in this game. If you die in this game, then the game is over. So you can use that to your advantage using the teleportation if you should ever need to. Then we look at the different hacks uh, where, and the description will let you know. So it allows you the possibility to steal, in this case, a dock module blueprint when scanning for data leaks. And 
you can see we can do the same thing for production modules. This comes in handy very, uh, very nicely if you want to save some money and not have to purchase all of the different uh, modules and blueprints for those modules from a particular faction. Now in this playthrough, I'm choosing to as much as humanly possible, I am purchasing all of them just for the experience that I want out of this playthrough. But if we need to, if there are some that I simply can't find who's selling them uh, at that moment, then we might end up using that. But for right now, I'm trying to purchase all of those, uh, which of course makes the gameplay take even longer. And of course, you've got some more options here, storage modules, defense modules, and habitation. Habitation is a huge uh, factor because if you want to put habitations or, or habitats down on your stations, then you're either going to need to purchase a blueprint, which is going to take a, a very large reputation. I believe it's plus 20 that you have to get to before you're allowed to purchase blueprints for habitats. Or you can go the module hack route of doing it. All right, now we come down to the mod section. And these are various mods that can be applied to, as you can see, the chassis, engine, shield, or weapons that will give you additional benefits. It'll make your weapons stronger, your shields stronger, and so on. And we'll take a look at how some of that works here in just a moment. But it looks like I am, uh, she's completed all of the current research. So I'm gonna go ahead and get her started. You can see the 10 minute timer will start ticking down from the moment I get her started. So essentially, once you finish all of this research, whether it's all of it total or all of it that you simply want to do, then you're done with the main story plot. Uh, there's really no more interaction to be had, and you're left to go out and sort of forge your own path and decide how you want to play out the game, which is perfectly fine with me. So right now you can see I started with the basic weapon mods and then worked my way up through advanced and exceptional. Then I went to the shields. Uh, now we'll do the engines and then finally we'll finish up with the chassis. But really, once you get through teleportation, that's really all for my purposes that I really care that much about. Okay, so now let's come in under uh, the player information. And if we come under modifications, which is the third option down. Here you can see all of the different mods that can be applied. We're going to click on weapons and you can see we can increase our weapon damage, uh, improve the cooling, reload, and several other things here. So let's go ahead and click on damage since I'm sure that would be a popular one. And it will let us know exactly what we need to gather as far as resources in order to put together this mod. And you can see that there are several different types and they're grouped together based on the level of improvement, whether you have normal or exceptional, advanced, and so on. So for this particular damage mod, it was going to give us anywhere from a 5% improvement to a 20% improvement. And again, that's the randomness in the game. Uh, so a very, very large gap there. This one's a little bit better. 35 to 45, so at least you have a smaller gap and you have a much better idea of what you're in for. But you can see that we have, because these are the same level of mod, the normal mods, that you have the same basic components. We're going to need a basic weapon chamber. We're going to need a high, high energy catalyst, three of those, and then tuning software. And you can find these uh, primarily through uh, destroying enemies. Uh, as you destroy those, then they'll drop some resources and you'll find these from time to time in those. At least that's where I've gotten them to this point. I'm sure there are mods that can uh, make it that much easier for you, but that's where I've generally uh, found these in the past. But as we move on through the different levels of upgrades, you see we go from a basic weapon chamber. Now as we get down here in the advanced, now we need an advanced weapon chamber and then we still keep with the high energy catalyst three of those and then the tuning software and then finally as we come on down to the exceptional level you can see now we need an exceptional weapon chamber and so on so that'll give you an idea of exactly what you're in for but the main thing here is to take a look at the percentages of increase or efficiency increases that it's giving you in some cases i mean you can see this damage mod is 10 to 30 but we can get pretty close to that up here. 
uh, particularly in this one, 35 to 45. So just keep in mind that just because it says exceptional may or may not be the best way uh, to go. But as well as giving you, uh, in this case, since we're under weapon damage, it's going to give you the weapon damage increase, but it's also going to increase additional properties and it'll let you know those additional properties. And this is where you can get into uh, some other things that might make it good to go with the exceptional, which can increase three additional properties on the ship, which might be uh, any number of things really, but you get up to three more properties and then up to two more properties. And then finally the basic ones, you get up to one, if anything at all. So there's a lot to deal with here. And if you really enjoy uh, fighting the enemies in this game, then you stand a pretty good chance of eventually getting enough of these uh, parts in order to put together some mods for your particular ship. And again, the same thing will apply to shields and engines and so on. So if we look at, uh, for example, the attack time or the release time, thrust, We'll take a look at thrust really, really quickly. And you can see we haven't gotten done with all of the research on this. So we only have a few things that are available. And each of the, uh, the parts that are required are a little bit different. Here we need a basic engine fuel injector, extended fuel container, and then navidium oxide, which you can see uh, these are a little bit easier to get in my uh, experience. Uh, I'm able to pick up some of these even from the civilian ships that are classified as enemies and you're able to destroy around stations. So that, that makes those a little bit easier to get than having to go out and actually fight the enemies. So that is essentially what the main storyline is as of now. But again, in the future, I'm sure they have plans to expand that because we know at least one thing is coming and that is player shipyards. Uh, one of the issues you have with the economy in the game is that everything runs off of the shipyards and the wharfs. So if nobody's building any ships, then the economy basically stagnates and everything stands still. And in fact, that happened very early on in uh, this particular playthrough. It didn't take me long at all before even the Argonne Wharf, where we're currently located, ran out of supplies and then we get into they need engine parts and so on uh, so basically what I'm doing right now is I am setting up factories that will allow me to provide those parts and basically I'm gonna try to fix the economy uh, as much as I can anyway through my gameplay and setting up the different stations and modules now one of the mods that I'm using uh, basically allowed one of the issues that I had with the game is where our initial factory, where our HQ is placed. It's over here uh, at the be very beginning, but I didn't really want it there because it takes a little bit more time to get, or excuse me, not there, the Grand Exchange. Uh, we're going to take a look at what's over here in Ativa uh, Choice here in just a moment, but Grand Exchange is a little bit out of the way for me, so I wanted a way to get it over here into uh, the Argonne area, and so that's what I've done. Uh, so in this particular save, it's over here. And let's take a look at what I've done here so far. So this is our initial uh, station that you get, the player HQ uh, that comes with the main storyline mission. Here it's exactly the same, only it's in a different spot. And there are other mods that can allow you to put it in whatever sector you want. But for my purposes, this was, uh, it was working out quite nicely. So if we come in under plan build and just take a quick look, what I've done here is I've put uh, initially a basic dock area and then more recently, you can see down here, we're working on a luxury docking area just so we can have more docking space for trading with the various ships. We can handle more at one time rather than uh, the current one medium ship at a time in the basic dock area. So we're going to continue to expand that. And then on the back side of the station here, I've been building up, you know, your energy cell production. But then I've got a couple other things. We've got, as I shift this around a little bit, we've got refined metals here. And then we've got engine part production there. And that is one of the big factors that we're going to need to help out all of these shipyards uh, going forward. Hull parts are another issue that you're going to run into. In fact, that's the issue that we're running into big time in a couple of my construction projects. So we're eventually going to get into 
making the whole parts as well. So let's come in under the logical station overview. And here is essentially going to take you through the entirety of your production process and let you know which materials are required for what. Uh, of course, we're making energy cells and we're going to make 12,000 of those per hour. And right now what I'm doing is I have a sell price, no automatic pricing here. I actually have them uh, set up to be the minimum pricing, which is 11 credits. And that's simply because I want to keep some money flow using this. It's not a whole lot of money, but it's enough to try to keep some money flowing into the account along the way as uh, we'll need some of these energy sales for further production, but not all of them. So that's why I try to sell off as many of them as I can. And if it turns out we're selling off too many and I don't have enough to continue my production, I'll simply increase the price as necessary. Or I could come in and actually restrain trade with other factions if I need to go that far. So far, antimatter sales are the one thing that I cannot produce on my own. I'll need to get a blueprint somehow for that going forward. But for right now, we don't need that many of them. Uh, the container will only hold 242 as of now. So not a huge deal. Uh, for the ore, I've actually turned down the pricing as low as it'll go simply because I've got three station miners that are mining ore like crazy. And we'll see how that goes. Maybe I need to add a few more to it. But for right now, I think we're okay on the amount of ore we have coming in to the station. Then we move over to refined metals. You can see currently it is going along just fine. And we've got about 30 more minutes worth of materials. But of course, that will change as time moves along. We're selling off some uh, refined metals. Once again, we're going to need some of these for the engine parts. But I'm also trying to keep a steady supply of cash coming in. So that's why I will continually adjust this price uh, up or down, just depending on how many sales and how much of this we have in stock. And then finally, we move over to what will for now be our biggest money maker, if I can get it to move. There we go. Which are the engine parts. And for engine parts, we need the antimatter cells that we looked at over here, refined metals, as well as uh, the energy cells. And of course, we're making the refined metals and energy cells, so we're in great shape there. And we've got plenty of resources to go about 45 more minutes for that. So we're in really good shape. And if we come over to the final selection, you can see we've got 120 of the engine parts saved up right now. And then of course we can come down to all of our stats just to see how things are uh, progressing. Here you can see the, the manager's account. Uh, and again, we've got a steady supply of money coming in. Not huge amounts, but enough to keep us up and running so that we don't have to really worry too much about his account. Okay, now we come under storage levels, and the ore has been doing pretty good. We got up to uh, look like around uh, 5,500, not quite, uh, but now we're trailing off as production is really kicking in. So that's where I'll keep an eye out on this and just see how many uh, miners I need to assign to the station. Right now we have three, and that seems to be doing okay, but we'll keep an eye out and see if we need to add any additional. Energy sales. Right now, it looks like we're hovering somewhere in the three to 4,000 range uh, and oscillating back and forth there. So again, no big deal on that. Let's actually come in under the prices and you can see how I have uh, messed around a little bit. In fact, this one's not gonna go back. Yeah, okay, I changed that one out before it actually uh, got going. Let's see, or uh, you can see we went from 45 down to 41, so we've adjusted a little bit there. Uh, not a whole lot needed there. Refined metals, it by default wanted it to be up around, I think it was 162 or 161, somewhere in that range. Uh, but I've actually lowered that quite a bit just so we can get some money flowing until I get a much better idea of how much this we're gonna need. So that is our current layout for this particular station. And again, over time, we'll be getting more blueprints and adding more to this station. Uh, but for right now, we're automatically pricing this, or excuse me, not automatically pricing it, but we're pricing it at 719. So if we come back out, and let's just take a quick look uh, at some of these options. Uh, let's go under engine parts and let's zoom out a little bit. And you can see here's our 719 that we are currently making. Um, 
as you can see, there's plenty of demand here uh, at 719. Now, I've actually been testing out. The reason I put it at 719 is I'm testing out this station trader the way I've got it set up to see if he will actually trade those parts. If he will come over to our station, pick those up, and then take them over to be sold. So in all likelihood, I'm pro it's probably not going to work the way I want, uh, at least for now. So I'm going to have to adjust this pricing. But for right now, we're going to see how this goes, and I'll see what I can learn along the way. Here you can see the additional ships that I have that are not currently uh, attached to a station. And it also lets you know one of the mods that I have uh, decided to try out and just see how I like it, and that is uh, the Tater Trader. That is an automatic trader, which is a humongous increase in efficiency over uh, what you get with the default game. The, by default, the, the auto trading, it works, but not as well as it should. So this is certainly an increase over that. And it gives you the ability to decide exactly what wares you want to trade with and which ones you don't. So all that part is very close to how the uh, auto trading works by default in the game. Then you also see I've got some uh, NVIDIA miners that are out uh, doing their thing for now. I keep a check on the demand for that just to make sure that we don't run out of demand uh, and have a bunch of guys sitting around doing nothing. But so far, everything is progressing nicely. But at the top of the screen, you can see we, of course, have our main factory that we started out with through the storyline. But then we have an additional one which is where we're going to be heading uh, to now. Let's get some of this stuff out of our way. So we move over here to Hatikva's uh, Choice, uh, or at least Hatikva's Choice number one. And I've placed the station over here. You can see I've placed it a fairly good distance away from uh, the, the travel uh, highway here, just so I could keep down on the price. I think it ended up being somewhere around uh, 200 to 220 thousand credits so very minimal amount of money that i spent there and we're simply working there you can see our builder who is a good distance away right now sitting over here next to the highway but he's close enough to get the job done anyway so let's come in and take a look at uh, the build this one is taking a good bit longer simply because i decided to uh, start off with the tier module the three dock tier so that we could get some larger ships in here uh, basically i just wanted to try it out and see how it works, see how expensive it was, and it turns out to be terribly expensive. Uh, so right now, you can see we have some resources that are uh, available in here. I've also set up uh, some turrets and shields in all three uh, of the areas here in this particular module. And then anywhere you see this particular icon uh, to the right, that means that you can add shields and or turrets, just depending on what you have blueprints for uh, that might be available to you. For right now, I have purchased the the, uh, the Mark II shield module and then uh, the Mark I for the beam module, and that's the only ones I've really uh, wanted to purchase. So that's what we have as of now. Okay, once again, let's back out a little bit and if we take a look at what I've put down, you can see here some connector modules, some uh, storage modules that we have here, as well as, of course, a dock. But then the biggest thing is the space fuel. Um, I am getting into the space fuel production so that we can hopefully make a good bit of money off that. Again, something else to test and have fun with. Uh, and then along the way, I'm sure we'll add some more modules as we continue. And it looks like we just got enough product in uh, storage to continue on a little bit further with uh, the peer module. So it looks like it's going to stay, well actually it looks like the game has decided to freeze on me. So let's see if I can figure out what's happened here and then we'll get back to it. Alright, so it looks like we got a few issues going on right now. Who knows, we may be overloading uh, the system with what we're doing right now. So we'll cut the this video a little bit short and I'll try to work through this before we get into our future videos but you can see we've got a couple of uh, locations up and going as we come back out to our map uh, and, and the good thing for me is both of these stations for right now are in fairly close proximity and I can get from one to the other even without teleportation fairly quickly and then we'll expand out from here uh, but we're at a point now in 
in this particular save. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, we got there very quickly in this save. In some saves, I find that I can get six, eight, maybe even 10 hours into a save before it becomes an issue. Uh, other times, I don't get very far at all, and that's what's happened here. Um, and if we come down and we look at, let's see, let's find somebody else and see how, find another wharf. Uh, let's see, there we go. Let's go to uh, the Parented Wharf, and let's go under Buy Ships, and you can see they need antimatter converters and engine parts. So long term, I mean, basically nothing is happening right now. They're in the middle of constructing eight ships, and none of them can be completed because of this, and it's been like that for some time. So it's going to take me a little while to try to work through this, but I'm going to try to fight through it and, and get the economy working as best I can by building everything myself and basically having uh, the complete loop in the production line, at least to the extent that I need it. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we will continue X4 Foundations.